we're getting started. So, so far it looks like I'll be able to get to both 4.5 and 5.1 through one incision, but just by angling. Look how skinny this little thing is to start with. I used to start with a needle, but the needle is so too flexible and too hard to drive. This is just right, small enough to be like a needle, but robust enough for me to aim it. Alrighty, so I've got the spaghetti noodle dialer in the perfect spot. Put in the 22 gauge tiny little needle into the center of the dish, shot and save. Injecting the blue dye, and I want to see it come out the back, shot, and outline the disc carnation. There it is. You can see it come out like this. So cute. It's also coming way laterally, so you're not going to see it put dorsally. Shot and save. Otherwise, this is a pretty healthy disc, so I want to be really gentle inside the disc on him. I want to mostly just do a fragment technique. Alrighty, this is what I call kind of like the first look. I've kind of cleaned up all the junk, and this is the disc herniation. And now I'm looking for specific landmarks to identify exactly where I am. There's the bone of the superparticular process that becomes confluent with the pedicle. As the pedicle rises up, it forms Wagner's arch. Alrighty, so there's Wagner's arch. Normally I should be able to just fall in here, get inside the canal, but no, this is all in my way. All this right here. Yep, I'm on top of the pedicle there. There's the canal. It's really tight, but I can get in there. Yep, I'm curling around the pedicle. There. Here's the side firing homium laser. It's so awesome. It is non-conducting, mechanical. Usually it just makes things disappear and it is magical. Okay, look at all these fragments are gonna start flying out of here. It's like my teenage kids. It's not gonna come out without a fight, I can tell. Small spike, mid guard shark, left side. Thank you, that makes sense. Medium spike, the other side near your left side. Thank you. That's Dr. Asimov, our neuromonitoring guru, telling me the status of the nerves. He's very negative most of the time, but his negativity makes us all stronger, so it's okay. I don't know if you can appreciate it, but this big bump is what needs to go. This big bump right there. Look at this massive bone spur. A bone spur, no moss. So gratifying sometimes. But that was a total pain to get out. And the exit nerve is right there, right there, right there, look away. Okay, pimple popping in the spine. Look at that cockapoo poo. Yep, this is it right here. Yeah. Oh God, there's a lot. Okay, look at the fat of the spinal canal. And I could not get in here at all. Now I can just drive a truck through there. Shot. Alrighty, I'm all done with this level. This is the area where I can, I demonstrate I can get totally in all up and down. This is the exiting nerve root area right here. That was the big bone spur. It was huge. It was sticking out like a Teton. And this should be underneath the nerve root shot. Look at that! Same, same thing at 5-1. Shot and save. Shot and save. This disc is completely not good. Shot. The whole disc. And look at that big leakage out the back already. Like a long time. So one of the reasons why everyone doesn't do endoscopic surgery is that Endoscopic surgery is a total pain. It's a tiny little cannula. You can't put in big instruments and everything looks the same. So how do I figure out where the hell I am? Combination of things. Number one, I use intraoperative imaging. That's up there to know where I am in three-dimensional space and how everything looks. Two, I use anatomic technique and I look for known anatomic landmarks. So here's the bone right here. And it's got a little arch that's called, we call that Wagner's arch after Ralph Wagner, one of my favorite endoscopic colleagues in Germany. Ex speed skater, his thigh is the size of my torso. And that's the pedicle as it becomes confluent with the beginning of the lateral recess slash superior articular process. And this is what gives me entry into the canal. So right here would be right curling around the Pedicle of S1. How do I know it's curling on the pedicle of S1? 
X-rays, X-ray. And feel, and the force, Luke, the force. And there's the disc herniation. Look at that, it's like a little mountain. And then the exiting nerve root is behind this. Okay, so that's the first look. There's the disc herniation. Empty tent sign. X-ray. And that is exactly where the disc herniation is on MRI. So I'm just correlating everything with everything, using every trick in the book, every possible piece of information to know exactly where I am. Because it can be confusing. Sci-fi and homing laser. Love this thing. Blue right there where the disc herniation is. Here's the mountain. Just using this tool to push down on it. The exiting nerve is over there. Look away. Oh, look at this piece gonna come out. I think it's gonna be a boy. For sure. Oh, oh, it's like my teenage kids though. Thinking about without a fight. Yep, look at that. Look at that. There's a lot more pieces in there too. This is the trigger flex. It's electrical. Look at that. It's like a blue poop just wanting to come out. Just needs a little bit of encouragement. Oh, oh, I'm gonna have to take the whole scope out. It's like a little mouse. There's another instrument. Curly Q, so if I put it in like this, it's gonna reach way up toward the back. Look at this. Oh, oh, ego, kaku, kaku, laku, maku. Jesus. I don't know about you, but that was really good for me. Was it good for you? All righty, I'm all done. Here is the exiting nerve root. Ooh, look how red and irritated it was. Oh yes, coming in from the other direction now. Uh-huh. All clear. Now I'm gonna do a radio frequency ablation of the facet joint. And get you on your way to a wonderful new year. Surgery is all done. I did it through that one poke hole, both 4.5 and 5.1. It was not easy. It was one of those very difficult teenager herniations that will not come out without a lot of complaining and resistance, but we got the job done. I expect you to wake up feeling better, and we all wish you the best luck in a speedy recovery and a happy new year. And as soon as it's dry, I'm going to put on the most awesome band-aids, so we're all praying for you.